On this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem calculating delta G from delta H and delta S. So in this problem, you are going to be given two chemical reactions and some data. You're going to be asked to calculate either delta H, delta S, or delta G and then make a prediction about whether or not the reaction is spontaneous. You do need to know the temperature for um, these problems, and the temperature is embedded up in the story up here in the problem. So this one, the temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. The equation that we're going to be using to solve both of these questions is delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. This is the equation that gives us the relationship between delta H, delta S, and delta G. And remember, the temperature that we're going to use needs to be in units of Kelvin. So I'm just going to start by converting this to Kelvin. 24 plus 273 looks like it's going to be 297, 297.15. So let's take a look at the first question. In the first one, we have the value of delta H, we have the value of delta S, and we need to calculate delta G, again, using this equation. You do want to be a little bit careful with this. Delta H and delta G, or excuse me, delta H and delta S don't have the exact same unit. One is in kilojoules, one is in joules. We want to look ahead at delta G and see the unit that we're being asked um, to give our answer. Delta G is kilojoules. So that means it would be smart for us to take this delta S value and just convert that into kilojoules. To do that, we'll just divide by 1,000. So this is going to be 4.062 kilojoules per Kelvin. And now we can go ahead and plug um, the delta H value and the delta S value and our temperature into this equation right here and solve for delta G. So for our first one, delta G is our delta H, which is 1207 kilojoules. And um, we're going to subtract from that. I need some more room. The temperature, which is 297.15 Kelvin times the delta S value um, in our converted units. So 4.062 kilojoules per Kelvin. Notice that that Kelvin unit is gonna cancel out and we'll have kilojoules minus kilojoules. And so let's go ahead and work the math out on this. 4.062 times our temperature, 1207 minus 1207. This works, this works out to be 1207 kilojoules minus this term here is also 1207. 1207 kilojoules. So this is zero. The delta G is zero kilojoules. And then the next question asks us which is spontaneous, this reaction right here or the reverse reaction or neither. So for the spontaneous process, delta G is less than zero when it is spontaneous. Delta G is greater than zero when it is non-spontaneous. And when delta G is equal to zero, like in this particular case, we say that the reaction is in equilibrium, which um, is different than being spontaneous or non-spontaneous. So for this situation, for this problem, we would choose neither. It is not spontaneous. It is also not spontaneous. It is in equilibrium. Let's try our next problem. In the next problem, we have delta H and we have delta G, and we're being asked to calculate delta S. We are being asked again if the reaction is spontaneous, so we're going to base that answer off of the value of delta G. Delta G is a negative number, which means that this reaction is spontaneous. This reaction is spontaneous. The delta G for this reaction is negative 18. The delta G for this reaction would be positive 18. We also need to calculate the value of delta S. We're going to use that using our delta G equation. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging on this equation right here. So first I'm going to say delta G minus delta H is negative T delta S. And then I'm going to turn that into T delta S. No, I think what I'm going to do is just divide everything by negative temperature. Delta G minus delta H divided by negative temperature equals delta S. And so now I can just plug everything in. 
Um, my delta G is negative 18 kilojoules. I'm getting that from right here. My delta H is negative 852 kilojoules. Be careful with the negative signs. It's minus delta H, and my delta H is a negative number. And then I'm going to go over negative temperature, which is 297.15 Kelvin. Uh, and this is going to work out to be negative 18 minus a negative 852 divided by negative 297.15. Negative 2.807. My units are kilojoules per Kelvin. Be careful, this wants us to give the answer in units of joules, not kilojoules. So to do that, we just multiply by 1,000. Negative 2807 joules per Kelvin. Uh, and this would be negative 2807 joules per Kelvin. I should take a look at how we want to express our answers to zero decimal places. So looks like I'm good in terms of expressing the answers correctly.